Um, so this is Gale Crater in the mound, and the landing ellipse is in a uh, flat area in the foreground. Um, north is obliquely down and to the left. So one of the key targets uh, in terms of mineralogy are clay minerals and mixed cl clay minerals and uh, sulfates is detected from orbit. Um, so this is an area that's just um, at the boundary of the ellipse where we'll look at that. The yellow lines uh, represent um, 100 meter contours and the distance between these two little white spots uh, is uh, 200 meters for scale. Um, so um, in this case the mineral maps show this ridge um, as being a mix of sulfates and clays and then the area behind it as being dominated by clays and then we go up into a mixture of sulfates and clays again and then further up the mound uh, it's the spectral signatures are dominated uh, by sulfate. So one of the key aspects of evaluating this is, is uh, trying to understand as much of the stratigraphy as possible uh, before uh, MSL launches. So I'm going to zoom into the area here um, and one of the things um, that you can see um, uh, I should mention that the vertical scale is one to one um, in this zone is that there are a number of layers and variations in albedo along uh, this part of the ridge. Um, we don't have the spectral detail to know how those vary um, uh, chemically. We know that the top of the ridge uh, appears to have a mix of minerals. Uh, but one of the first things science targets for MSL would be to look at uh, the stratigraphic variations here. Um, so if we move down the ridge, there are areas that have significantly uh, less lamination or less significant layering. So I'm going to uh, turn off the contour intervals um, here so we can see the layering uh, better. And um, what you can see is that there is uh, layering again uh, further to the southwest, um, but there are zones within this ridge that um, do not show uh, much layering. Rather, this looks uh, significantly more brecciated. Um, however, it does appear that the this ridge with the uh, clay and sulfate signatures, at least at the top, um, has a reasonable stratigraphic sequence um, that we can look at. So if we move to the area where there are abundant clay minerals, um, the, stratigraph the stratigraphy is significantly uh, less well defined. So there's this large flat area uh, in the zone here, which shows the spectral signatures of clay minerals, and one of the reason and and no spectral signature of sulfate. So one of the reasons um, that it might be so strong here, and this is part of uh, Millikan et al. Uh, 2010's interpretation, is that the clay layer represents um, a thin layer within the stratigraphy, and you can separate it out from the sulfates in um, places like this. Uh, that have very high um, exposure of that layer. So that there's a chance in their interpretation that it's very thin. Um, so when we look um, here in detail, uh, there are some bed forms in here that appear to be related uh, or could be related to more recent weathering. Um, and then there are uh, hints of lineations that consist of these light and dark tone layers that look sim similar to the layers that you see uh, within uh, that first ridge that shows the mixed signatures. Um, then let me pull up a scale bar here so we know what scale we're looking at. We do a measurement tool for that. Um, so um, place two measurements. So um, Okay, that distance is uh, 100 meters, so we're looking at pretty uh, large-scale features on here. Um, and so um, it's not clear to me uh, what we would actually see in terms of, of layering or sedimentary structures um, in this zone uh, from, uh, from the orbital data. Uh, it's a very flat area. 
There are indications of uh, uh, some possible laying around some of these mounds, but it's not, uh, it doesn't consist of extremely well-defined beds. Uh, as we move closer to the mound, the spectral signatures again uh, become a mix of clay minerals uh, and sulfate minerals. And there are a couple of very interesting uh, relationships. Uh, it's, qu it's quite flat, and there is, uh, are a couple of beds in here, or they could be um, some erosion and weathering surfaces. And I'll um, talk about that probably in the, uh, in the next video. Um, but as you approach the mound, let me zoom, zoom out for a minute to see the context. So the landing ellipse is to the lower left here, um, and this is a large, uh, the largest canyon close to the landing ellipse, and then we have uh, these slopes. So if we zoom back in, rolling the... What we can see is that within this zone, there's a contact that I've mapped uh, in a black line, uh, roughly outlined. Um, and it's not clear to me whether this is um, a contact within the stratigraphy or if it represents uh, an onlapping unit. Now, it's, um, it's interesting to try to understand what's causing this ridge and whether it's part of the stratigraphy or maybe it's, it's part of later uh, uh, fluvial alteration. So um, there's this canyon um, here that provided a lot of fluvial sediment, and we have part of Anderson et al. Um, mound skirting unit um, at the toe of that. And then the cross-cutting relationships of those are very interesting. And, and this particular ridge coming out here um, could be related to a canyon that comes off to the, uh, I think it's the northeast, yeah, it would be the northeast, um, out of that and along the zone in here. So I think we have some geologic questions about how these, this ridge and also the uh, first one uh, relate to this later fluvial alteration. Those are still relationships that need to be investigated. But one of the interesting things is when we look um, at this ridge, um, if we look at the other side of it, um, there's a uh, distinctive uh, trough um, or a sort of low area or, or break and slope um, that, that runs um, along this. And that's not actually at a constant elevation. Um, so if we um, first change the lighting so I can see my menus here, um, and then we uh, change Put, put the, the contours back on, and I will need a tool uh, to help set the contours quickly. So I will do that. So I'm going to set the contours uh, from here uh, to here. And that is a, f let's make it even, uh, that's a five meter contour interval uh, between those yellow lines. Um, here. So, oops. I didn't know you could resize the windows, so I'll put that up up here. Um, so if we um, look at this, there's, there's a distinctive zone in here that does not parallel the contours. And that's in contrast to um, at least some, some of the contacts. Uh, and then if you look at how it uh, uh, changes at the south end of this trough, it's, it's very difficult to see how it uh, connects into uh, the stratigraphy in the lower mound. So uh, this black line running through here um, with now the blue points on it, that represents a, a bench that I interpret as being a stratigraphic layer. And unfortunately, that bench dies out on the zone here. Um, so the upshot of it is that it's not clear um, if this ridge is associated with the stratigraphy that's within the mound itself or whether it's possibly related to um, part of the later fluvial activity in the canyon. Um, so that will be a, a really interesting um, uh, relationship to uh, look at with 
uh, MSL. And that's also likely to provide insights into the relationships of the clay minerals um, and the sulfates and, and um, their association with each other. So if we look at uh, where we can find the same mineralogical uh, relationships um, around the edge of the mound, we have the clay area here, mixed clays and sulfates. Um, that continues around and is very prominent to the southeast, and there's a large area here um, that we might want to consider um, as a, a prime MSL target um, as well. One of the interesting things is that the unit here with the flat planes, and I should say that this is 200 meters and the contour interval is now 20 meters, this flat area and the sediment um, coming from the canyon deposited here don't show either clay mineral or uh, sulfate um, uh, signatures um, from orbit, at least um, in Millikan et al. Uh, 2010. Um, so one of the interesting things in terms of uh, science targets uh, for MSL is that if we actually approach and enter the canyon um, across these surfaces, uh, we will see a different mineralogy than the clay and sulfate mineral signatures. However, we will also um, miss a significant amount of the stratigraphy um, in this interval. So. Uh, there is a mapped unit that's outlined by the blue points um, here that um, actually um, extends down into about this level um, near the canyon mouth. Uh, so if we zoom in uh, to that area here, um, you can see that there's actually very little in the way of uh, exposed layering. So these uh, steep slopes are the continuation of the layers we see um, in the other area and um, these map lines further up are the ones uh, are significantly or stratigraphically uh, significantly higher. Um, however, it's not um, obvious uh, from um, looking at the uh, outcrops here, whether we would actually see well-exposed stratigraphy that represents the uh, transition from clay, mixed or interbedded clay and sulfate minerals into the sulfate minerals uh, if we enter the canyon um, along a uh, zone here. Uh, problems with buttons. Uh, if we enter the uh, canyon along here. So we get to really the first good, well-expressed stratigraphic beds, at least in this imagery, they're only a few meters um, below uh, this marker bed, whereas um, in this slope over here, um, we have um, actually uh, uh, more than 100 meters of uh, vertical relief in stratigraphy, um, even with uh, the dipping beds. Um, so this, this uh, was is interesting in terms of traverses because unfortunately um, in the canyon over here uh, this bench uh, that's mapped in the middle um, our traversability analysis suggests that it is probably everywhere um, uh, too steep for MSL to be likely to climb. So there we may not be able to uh, access uh, the this, this stratigraphy um, through this point here. Um, that leads to the suggestion that we could possibly look at that stratigraphy to the south uh, in this zone over here. And again, uh, this bed right here is the, the same um, upper uh, mapped bed. Um, and again, in this zone here, there are certainly areas uh, with layering um, but the stratigraphic expression um, is, is not quite um, as good. So let me um, get rid of the contours just so we can see that expression better. Uh, there are bits and pieces of good layering um, in this zone, um, but again the terrain uh, lower down uh, tends to be uh, slightly more irregular. So one of the things about tr uh, planning a traverse, if we do choose Gale, 
um, will be a lot of detailed work um, tracing uh, these layers um, laterally.